ventilator-associated events. What does it mean to you? The purpose of this presentation is to provide a brief overview of the CDC's new algorithm for ventilator-associated event surveillance as of March 2013. In 2005, the CDC introduced the National Healthcare Safety Network. The NHSN is the network that hospitals and health systems use to report data to the CDC on healthcare-associated infections and other adverse events. One of the healthcare-associated infections that's been reported on the NHSN has been ventilator-associated pneumonia. The VAP surveillance definition was released in 2002. By the end of 2012, there were about 900 facilities that were reporting VAP rates on the NHSN, many of them voluntarily and some under state mandates. One of the reasons that the CDC decided to change the VAP surveillance protocol was that it was too subjective. One of the most subjective aspects of diagnosing VAP was the interpretation of the chest x-ray. For the last several years, the CDC has been working on a new surveillance algorithm to replace VAP reporting. On January 1, 2013, the CDC introduced the ventilator-associated event surveillance algorithm. This algorithm will apply to acute care, long-term acute care, and inpatient rehab facilities for patients that are 18 years or older and does not apply to patients on high-frequency ventilation or ECMO. There are three types of reportable events in the VAE algorithm. The first one is a VAC, which stands for Ventilator Associated Condition. VAC will be the focus of our examples. The second reportable event is an IVAC, which stands for Infection-Related Ventilator-Associated Complication. And the third reportable event is Possible or Probable VAP. A ventilator-associated condition is defined as a period of stability on the ventilator followed by a period of worsening. The data that's used to measure both stability and worsening is the daily minimum value of PEEP or FiO2. If a patient is determined to have a reportable VAC, then the hospital has to determine if that ventilator-associated condition was also infection-related, which would make it an IVAC. During a period shortly before and after the VAC event, if the patient had an abnormal white blood cell count plus new antibiotic therapy or an abnormal temperature plus new antibiotic therapy, it is an IVAC. In that case, the IVAC would be reported instead of the VAC. Patients that have a reportable IVAC then need to be further assessed to determine if the infection was a probable or possible pneumonia. This is determined through the analysis of respiratory secretions or positive cultures. This is a graphical overview of this algorithm. The goal is to identify patients who have had at least two days of stability on the ventilator followed by a period of worsening oxygenation. This patient was on a ventilator for four days with at least two days of stability. Then from day 4 to day 5, the patient had worsening oxygenation, defined as a PEEP that went up by 3 centimeters of water during one calendar day, and which stayed there for two calendar days, or an FiO2 that went up by 20 points in one calendar day and stayed there for two calendar days. In this example, day 5 was when the VAC event happened. The next step is to define the VAE window period. This is the period of time in which the VAC would be determined to be infection-related. In this example, the VAE window goes from day 3, which is two days before the VAC event, through day 7, which is two days after the VAC event. This is the period during which evidence of an infection could elevate this to an IVAC or a possible or probable VAP. Let's look at some examples of patients to determine if they had a VAC. Here's an example of a patient that does not have a ventilator-associated event. This patient was on the ventilator for six days, and during the six-day period, they continued to have stability and or improvement on both their PEEP and FiO2 values. What you see in the picture is two dotted lines for each graph. The black dotted line represents a baseline, and the red dotted line represents the threshold. In this example, days five and six, two days prior to today, are the baseline period. 
For each of those days, the hospital will have documented the daily minimum value of PEEP and FiO2, and the baseline will be set off the higher of those two daily minimum values. This patient doesn't have a ventilator-associated event, but if the hospital was trying to perform surveillance of patients to determine if they are at risk of having a ventilator-associated event, they would still have had to set these baselines and thresholds for each day, starting on day three. Let's look at another patient that does have a ventilator-associated event based on FiO2. This patient was on the ventilator for 11 days. You can see on days 5 and 6, they had stability on the ventilator based on FiO2. That's the baseline period, where the baseline was set at 60, so the threshold was 80. On day 7, the patient had worsening of at least 20%, and they stayed above that level for one more day. So that's a ventilator-associated condition. The gray box that extends from day 5 through day 9 represents the VAE event window period. This patient has a VAC based on PEEP. In this case, the patient's FiO2 baseline was set at 85%. A VAC based on FiO2 is defined as worsening of at least 20%. Our interpretation of the algorithm is that in this case, the threshold for FiO2 would be 105%, which obviously is not possible to achieve. So this is one way that a patient could get a VAC event based on PEEP. You will see in the PEEP graph that they have a stable PEEP of 5, and then on day 7, the PEEP went up by more than 3 centimeters of water, and it stayed at that higher level for one more calendar day, day 8. So day 7 is the VAC event date, and days 5 through 9 are the VAE window period, during which evidence of an infection could elevate this to an IVAC, or a possible or probable VAP. Our final example is a patient that does not have a ventilator-associated event. This patient had worsening, but that worsening did not occur fast enough to constitute a ventilator-associated condition. You can see that the patient has stability, and then on day 6 they had worsening, but not by 20 points. A new baseline will not be established until the patient experiences at least two subsequent days of stable or improving oxygenation. For this patient, a new baseline and threshold would be set on day 10. So what happens next? The CDC implemented this rule the 1st of January, 2013. There are two ways that this reporting could become mandatory, either through state mandates, and there are a handful of states that may mandate this reporting, or through the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Pay Per Performance Framework. We don't know when that might happen, but one of the stated goals of the VAE algorithm was to make it possible to include it into the Pay Per Performance Framework. Based on feedback from our customers, we believe that most hospitals and health systems that reported VAP voluntarily will continue with voluntary VAE reporting. We hope this presentation has been useful to you in understanding what VAE means to you. If you would like more information on VAE surveillance or on how CareFusion can help to automate the surveillance and reporting of ventilator-associated events, please click on the CareFusion VAE resource page link at the end of the presentation. Thank you.